So today we're looking at an introduction to the Pythagorean theorem. In class, we talked about who Pythag Pythagorean was. Um, so today I'm going to get into the actual theorem, looking at the equation and how you solve an equation. So in class, I gave you the equation a squared plus b squared equals c squared. And if you see, I've drawn two triangles here. Both the triangles here are right angle triangles. So one thing to remember is that you can't actually do uh, Pythagorean theorem on a triangle that does not have a right angle. So here is a, um, a triangle, and we're going to talk a little bit about it. And again, like I said, it has to be a right angle triangle, and so it's a right angle triangle. Now, opposite the right angle triangle, so directly opposite the right angle triangle, you'll find something called the hypotenuse. I know this word sounds weird. I know it's not a word that you have heard, but hypotenuse is um, what you call the longest side of a triangle. And so if you notice here, this would always be the longest side of the triangle. Now these two other sides are called the legs of a triangle, and this can be leg A and leg B. Okay, so you have two legs of the triangle and then you have the hypotenuse. Now Pythagorean theorem, and the hypotenuse is also known as C. So C equals the length of this side. A equals the length of this side, and B equals the length of this side. So when you take A squared plus B squared, it's always going to equal C squared. So let's go into our first example, and I'm going to walk you through this. So again, I've just flipped over the triangle, so it's not the same one. I just wanted you to see the triangle a little bit differently. But again, as you look at it, Opposite the right angle is where you find the hypotenuse, and hypotenuse is C, and that's what we're solving for. So we write our equation in A squared plus B squared equals C squared. We know that, again, it doesn't matter if you call this leg A or this leg A, as long as one of them is A and one of them is B. So that's all you need to remember. It does not really matter which one you refer to as A and which one you refer to as B, as long as one leg is labeled A and the other leg is labeled B. So a squared, which is 2 squared, plus 4 squared equals c squared. So again, 2, two to the power of 2 basically means, and I'm going to write this out just so you can see it again, means 2 times 2. So 2 times 2 is 4, plus, and again, um, if you have 4, it means 4 times 4, and again, I'm going to write that out so you can see it. So that means 4 times 4. And when you do 4 times 4, you end up with 16. So when you do the math, what is um, 16 plus 4? And that is 20. So your answer is 20 squared. Now, again, because it's 20 squared, you do have a square root in order to get rid of the squared, you have to put a square root sign, and then if you put pop that into the calculator, you'll get your answer, and it's going to be a, um, a decimal answer, so it's not going to be the exact answer. It's not going to be a perfect square root. So again, um, you have 20 squared, and in order to get rid of square, you do the square root. Remember we talked about that in class, so you do the opposite of square opposite of square, which is the square root, and if you pop that into the calculator, you're going to get 4.74, and that is the approximate value of um, our C. So our C equals 4.47. And um, so then you can put that in, and if you notice that that number is larger than both the legs, therefore you know your answer is correct. So we're and for the next slide, I want you now to pause your video for a few minutes. I want you to go ahead and I want you to try this question out. And I want you to see if you get it correct. So go ahead and pause your video. Okay, welcome back. And now that you're back, let's go ahead and see how you solved it. So again, um, we use Pythagorean theorem. So we say a squared plus b squared equals c squared. And so again, a squared doesn't matter if you call this a or this a. Again, one of them is labeled as a, the other labeled as b. So I'm going to go ahead and just use the 6 since it's right there. So 6 squared plus 9 squared equals c squared. So again, um, go ahead and you know c, 6 squared means 6 times 6. So 6 times 6 is 36 plus 9 squared means 9 times 9. And 9 times 9 is 81. And you go ahead and you add them up. 
and you end up with 117. So again, 117, that equals, that's C squared. So C squared equals 117. Now, how do I get rid of the square? Again, the opposite of square is square root, and so I'm just going to move this up here so you can see what we're doing. C squared equals 117. In order to get rid of the square, I go ahead and I square root my number. And C then equals, C equals approximately 10.81. And again, it's an approximate calculation because we don't have an exact number. It does turn out to be a decimal point. So the value of C, our hypotenuse, is 10.81. So again, I want you to make notes, I want you to review this, and I want you to be prepared with this for class tomorrow.